For 25 years, we've been defining and redefining what a notebook is and what a notebook can do. And today, we're going to do it again. It's 2018. Why don't we have multi-touch screen Macs? The company line is that it's not ergonomic, that having to reach up and across to touch the screen of a Mac to get things done is inefficient. But it's not about having to, though. It's about being able to. Adding multi-touch to the Mac doesn't remove the existing keyboard or mouse functionality any more than making smart keyboards for iPad Pro remove the taps and the swipes. So for real, why isn't Apple making any multi-touch Macs? I'm Rene Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. Thanks for joining me again. Let's dive into this. There have been third-party attempts to make Macs, if not multi-touch, then at least a little bit touch over the years, including the Modbook, which tore the notebook down and rebuilt it with a digitizer. But there's been nothing from Apple, nothing and more nothing. Like I mentioned in the R MacBook video, link in the description, Apple is a multi-billion dollar company. Billion as in money in the bank, not trillion as in market cap. And it can afford to explore, prototype, test, and tweak any and everything bloggers, social media types, and YouTubers can imagine, and often years before we can imagine them. In the case of the multi-touch Mac, Apple has said just as much over the years. Anything can be forced to converge, but the problem is that the products are about trade-offs, and you, you begin to make trade-offs to the point where what you have left at the end of the day doesn't please anyone. You, know, you can converge a toaster and a refrigerator, but you, you know those things are, are probably not going to be pleasing to the, to the user. Stephen Levy, speaking with Apple Senior Vice President of Marketing, Phil Schiller. From the ergonomic standpoint, we have studied this pretty extensively, and we believe that on a desktop scenario where you have a fixed keyboard, having to reach up and do touch interfaces is uncomfortable iOS from its start has been designed as a multi-touch experience. You don't have things you have in a mouse-driven interface, like a cursor to move around, or teeny little close boxes that you can't hit with your finger. The Mac OS has been designed from day one for an indirect pointing mechanism. These two worlds are different on purpose, and that's a good thing. We can optimize around the best experience for each and not try to mesh them together into a least common denominator experience. Stephen Levy speaking again with Phil Schiller, this time for Wired in 2016, following the release of the MacBook Pro with touch bar instead of a touch screen. We think of the whole platform. If we were to do multi-touch on the screen of the notebook, that wouldn't be enough. Then the desktop wouldn't work that way. And touch on the desktop would be a disaster. Can you imagine a 27 inch iMac where you have to reach over the air to try and touch and do things? That becomes absurd. He also explains that such a move would mean totally redesigning the menu bar for fingers in a way that would ruin the experience for those using pointer devices like the touch or mouse. You can't optimize for both. It's the lowest common denominator thinking. Apple came to this conclusion by testing if touchscreens made sense on the Mac. Our instincts were that it didn't, but what the heck, we could be wrong. So our teams worked on that for a number of times over the years. We've absolutely come away with the belief that it isn't the right thing to do. Our instincts were correct. Shara Tipkin and Connie Guglielmo speaking with Apple's chief creative officer, Johnny I for CNET at the same time. It's not because Apple can't make a touchscreen Mac. It's because Apple decided a touchscreen on a Mac wasn't quote unquote, particularly useful. And on the MacBook Pro, which keeps getting thinner and lighter, it could be quote unquote, a burden. And with Phil Schiller. Apple says it doesn't have a problem with the Mac and iPad overlapping, since each approaches tasks in a different way. They won't remove the iconic menu bar from the Mac desktop, for instance, just as they'd never add it to the iPad. It's great to provide two different ways to solve some of the same things, but they also do very unique things that the other doesn't. Having them separate allows us to explore both versus trying to force them into one and only one model. At Apple, we build prototypes around all sorts of ideas. So we certainly explored the topic deeply many years ago and had, had working models. Grafting touch on something that fundamentally was designed around a precise pointer uh, really compromises the experience. John Paschkowski writing for BuzzFeed following Apple's new Mac Pro tease in April of 2017. No, Schiller said when asked if Apple would consider building such a thing. Touch doesn't even register on the list of things pro users are interested in talking about. They're interested in things like performance and storage and expandability. Lauren Good speaking with Craig Federici 
for Wired in June of 2018 when addressing my question about whether iOS apps moving to macOS is a natural precursor to touchscreen Macs, Federighi told me he's not into touchscreens on PCs and doesn't anticipate he ever will be. We really feel that the ergonomics of using a Mac are that your hands are rested on a surface and that lifting your arm up to poke a screen is a pretty fatiguing thing to do. Federighi added that he doesn't think the touchscreen laptops out there today, which he referred to as experiments, have been compelling. I don't think we've looked at any of the other guys to date and said, how fast can we get there? So on one hand, when Apple executives say they don't like multi-touch Mac, it's because they're some of the very few people in the world who've actually used multi-touch Macs in the lab. It's not an idea or an abstract to them. It's one of the thousand things they looked at and said no to before saying yes to the iPad Pro. On the other hand, you have touchscreen laptops or laptop-like products from Microsoft, Google, and others that get a lot of attention from tech media and creative pros alike. But here's the thing, Apple executives are talking about the Mac as it is, with an interface that goes back to Xerox Park days, to the next days, to the foundations idealized around a mouse and pointer with tiny touch targets never meant for direct finger manipulation. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. To bring multi-touch to the Mac, Apple would have to redesign macOS and its interface to make fingers a first-class citizen when it comes to experience and interaction. The first problem there is the assertion that making things like the Mac menu bar more touch-friendly would force them to be less mouse and pointer friendly. The second problem is, even if you firmly believe a compromise could be reached, you still have to find the time and resources to reach it. It took Microsoft years to make Windows touch friendly, never mind touch equal or touch first, literally years in the desert through Windows 8 to get to Windows 10, but they had to do it. Windows Mobile, Microsoft's original touch-ish based operating system, didn't survive contact with iOS and Android. Despite frequent reboots and compatibility breaks through Windows Mobile 6.5, Windows Phone 7 and 8, it just hit a brick wall on phones and was never given a chance on tablets. It inspired a lot of the later, more digitally authentic design of iOS OS and Android, but it itself never succeeded in the market. So Microsoft was forced to make traditional Windows go touch. Google, by contrast, is a far younger company and never had a traditional computer business or operating system to worry about. It could buy Android, start work on a BlackBerry style device, see the iPhone, spin hard into multi-touch and go all in pretty much from the start. It could also take Apple's WebKit, make Chrome, fork WebKit, make Blink, and basically turn the browser into an operating system for a a large swath of the increasingly web-based world. And multi-touch web browsers have been a thing since Safari on the original iPhone. Like Microsoft, Apple has a successful traditional computer business with the Mac, and like Google, a successful multi-touch first mobile business with iOS. It could abandon the former and go all in on the latter. Some analysts in the name of focus repeatedly call on Apple to do just that, but there's no existential threat forcing Apple to do it just to survive the great interface transition of the last decade. It's already survived it just fine. Creative pros, at least some of them, are looking at products like the Surface Book and Surface Studio with abject lust in their hearts. They may be niche, something that Microsoft's modular model makes easier because so many other vendors can fill the mainstream gap where only Apple makes the Mac. That can still accrue mindshare, but maybe not enough to compel Apple to act. The first generation of kids though, the ones raised on iPads are growing up. They're not touch immigrants like us traditional computer user folks. They're touch native. They expect screens to be like iPhones phones and iPads. They expect them to respond to touch. And when they don't, there's no consideration given to ergonomics or history or context. They simply think the screen is broken. Apple no doubt believes anyone trying to touch will rapidly discover it doesn't work on the Mac, compartmentalize the same way they do basketball from soccer rules when it comes to hands and feet on balls, and just get on with using both the way nature and Apple intended. But what if they don't? Nobody wants touch on a Mac. Once upon a time, Steve Jobs said nobody wanted video on an iPod. Then we got video iPods. Nobody reads books. Then we got iBooks. If you see a stylus, you blew it. Now we have Apple Pencil. Like I said in the MacBook Arm video, for Apple, nothing unannounced exists and nothing Apple hasn't done is worth doing until it is. We do have one more thing. <laughs> we have great respect for these words and we don't use them lightly. So let's say regardless of what the Mac market was or is, the Mac market becomes a multi-touch market. How could Apple address that? 
The easiest answer, of course, is to just run iOS on Mac-like hardware, at least at the lower end. An iOS MacBook is something that, according to rumors, has been in the labs for years. An iOS Mac mini isn't hard to imagine either, especially with Apple getting back into the display business. If Apple does what it previously did and makes an iMac and standalone version of the same display, it could field a really interesting range of multi-touch non-Macs that would appeal to iPad Pro users and even those with Surface Studio Envy, but who also want and value more traditional clamshell, box, and all-in-one form factors. That includes people who find traditional computers off-putting, but also creatives who find multi-touch increasingly essential. And yeah, they'd run on ARM. And having iOS on the mobile and entry-level end and macOS on the high end, each with its own functionality, wouldn't be any more confusing than having iOS on the iPad Pro and macOS on the iMac Pro. Some people might want real macOS on real multi-touch, especially if they want to go from the terminal to the finger and back. But the vast majority of people now, and certainly going forward, probably really don't. And as iOS gets more and more capable, pushed by the iPad Pro, that'll become more and more true. And that's another easy answer. As iPad Pro becomes more and more mature, rather than being the touchscreen Mac, it can become the thing that legitimately eliminates the need for a touchscreen Mac. A dual booting device, one that could run iOS in tablet mode and macOS in notebook mode, would no doubt be compelling to some. Though the complexity of that idea probably punches every single toaster fridge alarm in Apple's park. Likewise, a MacBook that still doesn't have touch on the screen, but has even more touch than the current bar, the entire keyboard gone virtual. What's essentially a macOS display standing up and what's essentially an iPad Pro display, one that could become a full-on taptic keyboard or any control surface you need at any time you need it. One that uses proprioceptive lies to fool your fingers and brain into thinking it's real the way the Force Touch trackpad does today. Yeah, it's sci-fi right now, but it's always getting closer to science fact. And it's probably something traditional Mac users would hate even more than butterfly and dome switches. I mean, why else wean us down to flatter and flatter keyboards? The harder answer is to start adding multi-touch to macOS. Harder not just because it would require solving interface problems like the Mac menu bar for multi-touch, but because of the resources it would take to solve it. Yes, even Apple, with billions of dollars in the bank and a market cap that flirts in the trillions, can't do everything it wants not all at once. Just one constraint is engineers. Apple needs engineers and designers to come up with, implement, test, and deploy all the new code and all the new paradigms that would make multi-touch Macs a great product. There aren't that many top flight engineers in the world to begin with. Of the ones that are, not all of them are willing to work in Cupertino, California, or for Apple, instead of a company or startup with greater stock option growth or IPO potential. And competition for the ones who do want to work for bigger companies in the Valley between Apple, Google, and Facebook is fierce. Even when Apple is the first choice for those engineers, working on macOS may not be. Not when some see it as the past and the upcoming reality OS or autonomous technology projects the future. Even though Apple has some of the best engineers in the world, putting the ones it does have on retrofitting multi-touch to macOS means those same engineers can't work on other projects, including the next versions of iOS and the special projects that come after that, which is a huge opportunity cost. Just like having those engineers work on the performance updates for last year's iOS 12 meant new features like the rumored new Springboard got pushed to next year. So it's easy for me or anyone in tech media to say, just add touchscreens to the Mac. Like all Apple has to do is buy a touch later and slip it under the glass and then flip a switch. But we don't have to design and engineer the staggering amount of work that would actually have to go into making it all work. Apple could absolutely do it, but even if Apple could do it much, much faster than Microsoft with Windows 8 and Windows 10, would it be worth losing a year on iOS? Two years. While Google is plowing ahead with Android and its next generation underpinnings, Fuchsia, would it be worth the cost? That brings us to an even harder answer, if briefly, because I intend to go deeper into this in a future video. Apple's own next generation operating system. There have been rumors of ROS, the reality operating system that may one day power Apple glasses and other products to follow. There have also been rumors of a Titan OS that'll power Apple Apple's autonomous future, though some of the grander aspirations behind that no doubt changed when Apple refocused the project a couple of years ago. There's a future where iOS and or macOS simply keep evolving, having old modules like the HFS Plus file system swapped out for new ones like APFS, having daemons rewritten, frameworks redesigned, and otherwise year after year, step by step, becoming what's next. There's also a future where rather than merge macOS and iOS or replace macOS with iOS, Apple replaces them both with something new a next next, so to speak. 
That would be an incalculable amount of work, way more than retrofitting multi-touch onto the Mac or adding full keyboard and trackpad support to iOS. But it would also leave Apple with something far more interesting, a new stack from kernel to interface that is completely modern and input agnostic, something that provides local authentication, cloud connection, and simply understands whatever input methods are available to it from keyboard to mouse to multi-touch to the AI and AR future we're racing towards. Forget your toaster fridge, that's a replicator. E. Earl Grey, hot. But what if Apple could make the Mac just a little bit multi-touch? Again, I realize it's way easier to say something like that than to be the person in charge of implementing it, but a compromise could be to give Macs a touchscreen that enables gesture navigation, basically the same level of functionality the gestures on a Magic Mouse or Magic Trackpad already allow, and then let people poke, swipe, and pinch the screen if and when they really want to. Flick up a page in Safari, zoom into a map, tap to pause or play a movie, that sort of thing. Now, obviously that could be a complete and utter mess. If the Mac supports some gestures, people could easily expect to support complete, full-on multi-touch. And when they find out it doesn't, it could seem every bit as broken as no touch at all. But it's also possible people are smart and will adapt to the constraints and find it to be just the level of touch that they need. Another option is adding Apple Pencil support to macOS. The pencil is as precise an input tool as the mouse or trackpad and could bring all the great pressure sensitivity and angle detection features from iPad Pro roaring onto the Mac. And because it's so precise, macOS wouldn't require the kind of finger-friendly overhaul it would to support direct touch. And if Apple did both, gesture support for fingers and pencil support for pressure and precision, that would lead to some pretty amazing computing experiences from MacBooks to iMacs. I mean, at least until the fully multi-touch ARM-based iOS clamshells and all-in-ones appear, right? That's the amazing thing about the future. It's filled with limitless potential and possibilities. And if you want to be part of that future, but you don't know where to start, check out Brilliant. It's a great place to learn about the logic and theory behind coding, algorithms, artificial intelligence, and more. Each course is interactive and breaks up complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks to make sure you actually absorb the information, a strategy which I really wish was used in traditional schools. All you have to do is hit up brilliant.org vector and get started today. Thanks, Brilliant. And thanks to all of you for supporting the show. It could absolutely be like netbooks where Apple ignores every trend, every analyst, and then releases new products like the MacBook Air and iPad that become the trendsetters. But it's harder to see touch going the way of the cheap, cramped computing experiences. And the trends have already been set here. iPads help set them. Any year now, Apple could surprise all of us at WWDC and tell us macOS has been living a double life. One as a fully multi-touch operating system and it's finally ready to go public. Or that iOS has gotten full mouse and trackpad support and is all dressed up in fancy new clamshell and all-in-one clothes. Or that it's new reality OS is a titanic new reality and everything we've worried about in terms of Mac and multi-touch was a colossal waste of time in the new next generation world. So now I wanna ask you, what do you wanna see happen and what do you think will really happen? Should Apple bring multi-touch to the Mac? Can Apple bring multi-touch to the Mac? Hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.